Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Cross Beats Production. What's going on here with Nate to Wait, and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to show you guys mid-side processing and specifically within the EQ. Now, if you're familiar with mid-side processing, you kind of know what it is. If you don't know, then you should probably go look it up and study it. But basically, the end all and gist all is the mono channel and the sides. So sides could be reverb, anything that's delayed on the sides, you know, left and right panning, that kind of thing. Um, but really, um, most of the time, you're going to have sides and mids in your mix unless you just have a monocentric track. So it's specifically on a piano that I've got this particular track that I'm going to show you guys. And I wanted to show you how I usually process the mids and the sides on um, my tracks. So what I would pay attention to generally is listening to what is interfering with other things in the mix. So say, for example, um, you could have a piano where it's got a lot of reverb on it. And some of that reverb seems to be masking other parts of the track that you've got going on. If it's isolated, then you might not have this issue, but even so, you may want to still clean up some of the sides and the mids on your, your channel uh, that you're working on. So let's get into this piano. First off, actually, I'll play the track to you. I'll just play the drums and the isolated piano and show you what that sounds like. And um, then we'll just, um, actually, no, I'll play the whole lot. I'll just play this to you and just have a listen to this first, and then I'll explain all the processing right after that. Okay, cool. I've got on the drums, if you could probably pay attention to those drums, I had a bit crusher going on and the piano's up in the background kind of there. And I've got another piano which is kind of spread out a bit wider. Um, just in case you want to know what the piano is, by the way, I'll just show you what that is. It's the giant that's out of the Native Instruments um, plug-in bundle there that you can get. And uh, the drum kit, obviously it's um, a kit that I've made up. And um, this other kind of thing here, the bongo type thing. Um, so let me just explain to you a couple of things. So first off, the these kind of bongo things that I've got going on here, they've got some delay on it, which has created um, sort of a bit of a rhythm in the track. And I've used a plugin, which is by Kilo Hearts, which is just their ping pong delay. And I sent some feedback and created a bit of a mix there. Um, it's not entirely mixed in, but that's what that is there. And um, I spread it out a little bit wider than you expect. Um, so it creates a bit of width in the track. So you can see that and um, you can see kind of what that does to the mix as well because when you start to shift things out to the sides, then you're going to start to interfere with other things that are in stereo. For example, my piano that I've got going on. So if I just show you this piano and um, isolate those uh, bongos and play them together... Okay, so... Potentially, I could have a massive issue with my sides if I allowed it to be that way. What I've done here with this EQ, and it's my Ozone 5. I just wanted to show this because some people might be limited to Ozone 5. I don't know. Whoever's watching my videos may not have all the plugins that I have. So I figured I'd stick with an older one just for the sake of this video to show you guys. Um, so let me just show you kind of what I've got going on here. Now, first off, this plugin is really handy if you just want to have it as an EQ or you want to have a, you know, a multi-band compressor or whatever you want to use it for, um, harmonics or etc. Uh, but I'm using it just for the EQ at this particular time. So what I've done is this normally has a thing that looks like this. So it's in stereo and you can change it to left and right, uh, mids or sides, whatever you want. But we'll just go to mid side for now. And I'll just show you kind of what I would normally do on this particular piano for the EQ. So let's get rid of the, the bongo type thing we've got going on there. And we'll just isolate this piano and have a listen to it. All right, that sounds like a really good piano to me. It doesn't really need a whole lot of work. Uh, bear in mind that I do have the EQs on it. So let me just take these both of these EQs off and play that without it.
Sam with it. Okay, so if you listen specifically, go back and rewind again and listen to it, but there's something going on with the mids and the sides. So what I've done here, if you can see this mid channel here is in this kind of uh, ready kind of orangey color, um, and I've reduced out some of the low end frequency inside of the mids. So what it's allowed it to do is push the sides out, not really pushing them out, but allowing them to still be there, and the mid channel has been pulled down slightly a little bit. Um, it does reduce some of the volume as well, which was perfectly okay because I want to really get rid of some of those mids out of the piano so I could allow this, this mono kind of centric um, drum track to go through the middle and allow some of the sides of that as well to, to mix along with the piano. Now, this technique isn't something that's a brain science or anything like that. It's just a simple EQ technique, but I think sometimes people kind of forget that they can mess around with the mids and the sides independently. And even, even if you don't have Ozone or you don't have any plugin that has mid side processing uh, matrix in it, you can actually do it yourself by using a splitter tool. So I just wanted to show you quickly how this would work and uh, go over it briefly in that regard. So let me just show you, you pull down the splitter. Um, you have this thing here that shows a splitter right there. And you change it to channel split. Now, I've probably shown you this before in other videos if, you, if you're not familiar with my channel. But anyway, so we'll just go to the plugin section here and go down to PreSonus, uh, their plugins, and get the mix tool that you find that's just here. Hit that, duplicate it, bring it up just above the splitter tool, and hit this to be mid side transform. Uh, we'll just go back into that. I should just need to pin that to the screen. There we go. So. We've got that mid side transform on that first plug in there. And then we'll have the second one open as well. And we'll just pin that so that one's separate there. So you can see that's exactly the same. We'll go mid side transform, go in there, add 6 dB back because what happens with the pan law, it loses 6 dB and you want to gain that back so it's original volume level. And then what you can do is just go into your inserts again, scroll down here, go to Pro EQ, pull that back up here. And this is now your mid channel. So if you wanted to work around just your mids or your sides, say for example, you wanted one on your mids as well. Um, you could have one there. I'll just pin that there and one over here. So let's say for example, we want to just put these so they're kind of in the same vicinity of what's going on. So now we've got the mids in this channel here and the sides on this side. So you could EQ them independent. I'll just play this piano to you and I'll show you what's going on. this all the way down now you can hear just the mid uh, sorry just the sides so on my right hand side here I've got all of the sides I've got complete control of just the sides now this is just if you have uh, only the stock plugins that you want to use and you don't have any other EQ that's just a quick way of showing you how to do that um, it's really handy to be able to do that kind of thing I just I think it's fantastic um, anyway so that's another quick tutorial for you guys to uh, just digest on that regard. And um, if you have any questions, obviously hit me in the comments because I'm happy to help you guys out if you have any other further you know, questions or anything like that. But in this general concept, I just wanted to show you that it's really important to focus on both your mid and your side channel because when it comes to mixing, you need to make sure everything's in control before you send it to a compressor um, or you send it to your final mix out. And you want to have everything sitting there nicely so everything sounds clear and everything's in its own position on the stereo field as well. So hope you guys like this. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make your comments below about what you'd like to see on this channel, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.